I wrote books of computer programs, listings books. So essentially what it was, in order to have games on your computer, you could either buy a game from a, uh, on a cassette that you play into your computer, or you buy a computer magazine, and there will be listings in BBC Basic or the Basic or the programming language or whatever computer you had, and you type in the listing from the magazine, and then you'd save it on your cassette so you could play it in later. I wrote listings like that, but I knew how to do that a little bit because I understood BBC Basic and I use ZX Basic. So the reason why I was able to write or be involved in writing books of computer listings was because I knew ZX Basic, which lots of programs are written in, and I knew BBC Basic so I could convert from one to the other. So there are two main books that I did at first. One was called Games for Your BBC Micro, and the other was called Getting Started on Your BBC Micro. There were lots of computers being sold at the same time. And so you had different programs that didn't work on different computers. So if you had a program on your ZX Spectrum, it wouldn't work on your BBC Micro. So each publishing company had to have a book for each kind of computer. So those are my two books. Then I did more games for your BBC Micro, adventure games for your BBC Micro, and other people adapted my books for the BBC Electron. So I got co-authorship on that, even though I didn't do anything. So to the extent that the BBC Micro changed my life on a financial basis, yes, a 15-year-old boy suddenly had the cash because he, suddenly there was income coming from books. So I made a lot of money as a 15-year-old, which meant that I didn't have to have a job when I was at university. I could support myself, but not a huge amount of money to um, maybe bend my life all out of proportion. In the early 80s, I had been playing around with computers, the ZX80, and I saw other people have the ZX81. But then when the BBC Micro came along, it seemed to be a whole new world. New kinds of graphics, new kinds of technology, fantastic keyboard, all in one. But the it was the graphics was especially good. There was mode zero for high quality graphics, lots of resolution, mode two for lots of color then mode three, and then mode seven was completely different. It was the kind of graphics that I saw on television when I turned on the teletext with flashing lettering, double height lettering, and it looked so clean and clear compared with all those pixels and those other modes. So I really like the design aspect of it, the design of the graphics and how to choose which mode made me actually come up, have to come up with ideas. So it really appealed to the designer in me. And later I became a graphic designer, doing all sorts of design around the world at conferences and also in a magazine designer in the 90s. So I think the BBC Micro had changed me in two ways. Firstly, I was able to move further on to more technology, such as the Apple Mac computer in 1984. But the major thing was I realized the world was much smaller than I thought. I could meet young men or boys as we were, 15, 17 year olds, and realized that they could write software, could create new businesses. And there was no, the grown ups were a minor aspect of it. We could all work it out ourselves by just talking to each other and making things happen. So it was very entrepreneurial, I suppose, for them, very in 1980s. Uh, for me, I kind of waited and then eventually created businesses later on, including the first desktop publishing place in central London in 1988. So BBC Micro changed my life because I was able to see a wider world and realize that it's not as big as I thought it was when it comes to technology and people being able to change their world with technology.